CPDC meeting. Uh, so first up on today's agenda is a request for review from the Climate Advisory Committee, the proposed recycling bin in the public lot behind CBS. Jess, you wanna kinda baseline us on this one? Sure, so if you recall, we uh, brought this to the board's attention a few meetings ago and um, subsequent to that we met with um, the DRT, the development review team meeting to get their their feedback on the proposed recycling bin um, in the public lot behind CBS. The Climate Advisory Committee has been working with um, JRM, our trash hauler, on providing a bin um, in the location of the parking lot behind CBS. Um, included in your packets are some comments, um, copy of the DRT notes, um, sort of echoed this board's concern about the maintenance um, of the bin and any issues that arise due to any illegal dumping or um, inappropriate use of the bin. So we do have representatives from the Climate Action Committee here. Uh, the jurisdiction for CPDC at this point would be sort of a recommendation or um, a memo to the Board of Selectmen who will have ultimate review for the bin as the Roadway Commissioner's jurisdiction over the parking lot. Okay, so. so we're not necessarily approving anything, we're just giving our input to the Board of Selectmen. And when do they have it on their agenda? They have it on their agenda, I believe next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> we do have um, Ron Dario is here and Dave William. So if you wanted to add anything to the proposal or just sort of describe the proposal for the board, um, that may be helpful. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. please. I'll bring up this map to sort of, so you can use if you need to. Yeah, please, go ahead, yeah. First of all, thank you for having us here. We really appreciate the opportunity to kind of present uh, our, uh, our attempt to put a recycled bin behind CBS. Uh, just to give you a little background, the first I'd like to thank, thank uh, Tom Flanagan for coming uh, and joining us for the um, uh, uh, We started this like in 2011. We tried to do it with Peter, and we had uh, one stumbling block Peter Tecklenburgner was not wanting to give up uh, parking space. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we tried actually with uh, Jess Jesse Wilson, I think in 2012, uh, she had, uh, we, we tried to work out something with uh, Jamie on Wogan Street and we tried to work out something with, uh, uh, um, with Northern Bank and Trust. We tried to, to work out something there and it didn't quite work out. So we kind of dropped it for a while while MF Childs was renovating and rebuilding. And then we took it up with Bob again, we were sure. And uh, there was something they thought they might do something with CVS because they were doing, making some modifications. And that didn't work. So uh, after that, and we we're like in 2014, we decided to do a survey to see if the retailers would indeed be willing to give up the space or not. So we, we kind of canvassed about 16 of the retailers around the lot, and rather amazingly, we came up with um, just about everybody, everybody but one was willing to give up the space to get the bin. You, you have a copy, you should have a copy of the yeah, survey. We do. Yep. Yeah, we do. With the names of the, the people. Um, uh, so that kind of surprised us uh, that people would actually be willing to give up the van, give up a parking space, uh, and were enthusiastic, wanting to have uh, a recycle bin. So this kind of re-enthused us to get back in the game again. Uh, a, a couple of them wanted to include plastic and metal and et cetera, and glass, and uh, I, I didn't tell that to Tom because I want to go one step at a time, and uh, let's see if we can get one thing up and running. So um, we, uh, we, we looked and uh, I guess we, we came up with a potential spot. It's, again, 
again, it's in your uh, handout, uh, which was sort of uh, behind, I guess it would be, well, it's almost like if you uh, <coughs> walked into the walkway where Bun Riders is going to be, yeah. and you walk right to the fence with his like that little triangle would be right. back there. Uh, there's a possibility we could have a small impact on the, uh, maybe, maybe save a space or maybe take a piece of a space and, and still have something there, but uh, anyway, we thought we could get it in there. Um, we also, yeah, th there's a good look at it right there, so I think it would be, where is it, somewhere about here? Yeah, right about there, so here's the walkway. Uh, I think this is this is this would be Bunrad's, I believe, right? Yep. yep. This is the dentist, I think, right? Yes. So it, it would be we would look around, around here. Now the good thing about the dumpster is that it's not going to be nailed down. It's not going to be welded down. It can be moved. So it's not permanent. Um, JRM is going to uh, put some signage on it, indicating it's strictly for uh, paper, newspaper, and cardboard. Uh, it's a fairly attractive unit. Uh, Tom has some pictures that he feels to, can show you, etc. Um, the dumpster, actually, the one that you're looking at in your folder is really just a generic one. The one that Tom will provide will not have an opening that you can dump in anything. It's actually going to have two openings on the side. It'll be two feet by two feet. And he has a potential one that he just presented us tonight that in addition to those two side panels, you'd be able to open the top less than a foot. But it would be wide, possibly uh, more than five feet, I believe, right? On, on wood. So if you had like a uh, cardboard, that you had a big piece of cardboard, you wouldn't necessarily have to cut it up two feet mm -hmm. width. So I think that would be nice, you could slide it in. But it would inhibit you from putting in, you know, a lot of waste. Now, I mean, the bottom line on this is that, you know, I know you're concerned <coughs> about abuse and putting stuff in that doesn't belong. Uh, the bottom line is, if uh, if people do put stuff in that doesn't belong, and we can't we can't get them to stop by signage or, you know. Uh, then, it, I mean, ultimately, uh, J.R. and Pauling would take it out, and that would be the end of it. Um, the Climate Committee, we have, uh, we have volunteered that if it should go in, that we would, uh, we would come up with paperwork that Tom can work with, with us on what the rules would be. We would personally hand carry it to everybody around and talk to each, each of the people. The bottom line is we want them to use it because one another reason for Tom removing it would be if nobody uses it. Now they have a lot of reason to use it because they pay to have their waste removed. If we can take some of their waste, recycle it, then that that's that much less that they have to pay for for trash removal. So they have an incentive to do it. The other incentive is not just money, but because what what I found when I traveled is a really strong desire to use it because I think recycling is starting to get into people's psyche that you can't be throwing stuff away anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't work in a society. You know, resources are, are getting scarcer and prices are going up and you just have to start to live in a sustainable way. So I think, you know, it's sort of something that the time has come. We're hoping that if we can be successful here, that we could be successful in other places around town. And maybe we can have a lot, many of, more of our businesses start to recycle. Now, some of the people even take stuff home, they told us. I take stuff home, I do that, I do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want, we want people to use it, and, and we're not limiting it to business around here. Anybody who wants to use that for paper and cardboard, I don't care if you're a resident, and you want to use it for paper and cardboard, use it. Tom's happy to get any paper and cardboard, he doesn't care who puts it in. So I, I don't know, that's that's a bit of a background. No, that's helpful. Thank you. Can, can we answer any concerns or, or questions? Who wants to start? 
Well, I think we voiced our concerns <coughs> last time, and most of it yeah. was about about abusing it, whether we get uh, TV waste or food waste or something else that would sort of make it very unattractive and unsustainable. So if you can keep an eye on that, and if it gets abused, take it away. That's the bottom line. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's really no other concern except, I mean, the, obviously recycling is, is good. Having it accessible to the, the businesses around the parking lot is, is great. Uh, and as long as it's managed and monitored, the, you find, I think you find a good place for it. If, if you do show up, I'm sorry, Tom, is that? Yes. If you do show up and there's a television there or something, do you take that with you or no. do you leave it? No, we don't okay. that. that. That's, um, well, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm yeah, please. I'm the manager of JRM, and uh, we've been a partner with the town of Reading for well, 10 years now. And as a partner, we want to do anything we can to promote recycling and to uh, make it easy for not mm -hmm. only residents but businesses to do the same. Um, I've proposed a, a container that's um, it's fairly a new style of container. And it is very, um, it's different looking than the other dumpsters uh, that we service for the city. Uh, and it can be clearly labeled as recycling. Uh, but we're, we're not going to, if there's an issue with contamination where we show up and there's TVs and stuff, I told Ron it, it's something we've tried to help him with, but we're not going to be able sure. to sustain it and, and continue the, the service. So okay. um, we, we don't want to encourage people to illegally dump. But we think that it's, you know, if it's controlled in that area, we think that it's a good idea and we're willing to try it and see if we can help out the, the businesses. The climate committee also volunteered to help monitor it as well. I, I, I would, we talk, if there was a TV set and we got a call, I, I, I think I'd go get it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't know how to do it. Um, <coughs> you also didn't know the police we were at the DRT meeting, and we found out that the police, uh, they control that twice a night. They go through. They do all the businesses. They, they hit every business twice a night. So if somebody's going to do some illegal dumping, they better be careful. Right. <laughs> they better be careful. So my only concern is really as this sets a, a precedent in the sense that we, um, you know, most of the, um, new businesses that we see that are coming into town or the you know anyone that's redeveloping their property they plan for both um, both a recycling dumpster and a trash dumpster or uh, some some way to recycle because it's cheaper for them to do so um, and I, I I can't imagine that that's going to go away um, and so what we're we're doing here is sort of extending these businesses' footprint into the public parking lot um, by allowing them to, to throw away their, their refuse into, a, into a, a facility that's being provided um, on, on town property. It's a good, you know, it, um, I, I, if I remember correctly, the um, you know the um, MF Charles building, their whole trash plan has mm -hmm. recycling there on site. So um, you know I'm not sure what you know. So um, it's those businesses that haven't done much development or <coughs> reconfiguration that don't have um, on on site dumpsters. So you know I guess I, I don't want it, it, it to be thought that um, anyone that develops. Uh, rebuilds their property, they're, they're not going to have to accommodate for on-site disposal because the town's just going to put it in, um, in, a, in a town parking lot. I, I don't think that's a good, um, people should be taking care of their, their own trash, whether it's recycling trash or, or, mm -hmm. um, or yeah, I mean, typical municipal waste. We have some control over that in terms of the uh, Project reviews and, and so forth. I mean, right. Site yeah. plan review. Yeah. So I mean, you're absolutely right. The, but if we have you know volunteers, we'll pick up the TV and, and run it over to the public works and in the anything with a plug bin. Yeah. That's okay. 
you know, as long as as long as it's a sustainable. I don't see this as being thing. a problem, as I mentioned last time we talked about there. This there's one right out in the parking lot here, um, and um, uh, that anyone can come and throw their trash in. Right. It's not next to a business, but um, um, I don't I don't think there is issues with um, with um, uh, disposal of TVs or that sort of thing. So. I think that's done by the church. I think that's church, the church part of the parking lot. Yeah, I think so. so. John, our hope is that, you know, from a climate committee point of view, we see a lot of the fast food places, and I, I've talked to them, you know, about recycling and stuff, and it, I, I'm amazed that, other than maybe cardboard, uh, there's a lot that just goes into trash. And uh, they've done better now in, in the way they package things, for sure. But there's a lot of waste, and you know this, this is not the time to go into that. But I would hope that you know, one day we can kind of control that. You know, control it. <coughs> and I met uh, my big world. I was talking to Tom about it, and they have recycling for return bottles, returnable bottles on the trash receptacle if you've been a big world. Mm -hmm. And that's because probably one of the staff will, want, will take the bottles in and. It, get paid for them. But you know, somehow our businesses, I think a lot of them want to. What I don't know why they don't, but I mean mm -hmm. part of it is the the, 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 uh, the material is soil and soil material it isn't going to work for recycling. But anyway, we're we're trying to see if we can we can do a better job and maybe sit down with some of these people and talk to them and maybe that's what I just Wanted you to have that in your mind too, sure. and I know you're, you're setting up programs where they have to do it, and then maybe it's following up a little bit. So sometimes, I mean, we're all guilty of drawing out plans of what you're supposed to do, and then push comes to shove, you don't always follow up on every, you don't dot every I and cross every T. Do you see this as being the first of? Many dumpsters potentially. I I would my, my hope is I mean there's only so many town parking lots so it's right. not like we can put one everywhere yeah. we want. But no, our hope is to you know to work and see if we can do more. I mean anything we recycle, they say a ton of paper is 24 trees. Don't ask me the diameter tape. I don't know what they use. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you if you say you use a ton. Of recycled paper, you save 7,000 gallons of water. Yep. Now, we're not going down all that litany of stuff that you know we've all heard. There's true savings there, not only monetary, but there's resource savings. And, and uh, at the Climate Committee, it's part of being sustainable, pushes for that, wants that. As I, as I see it, I just should say this, that I think John is right in saying that most businesses do recycle. They already have a plan in place and it's saving the money. And I think this is going to be a, a reason, you know, you're not going to go to a McDonald's and say, bring the cardboard over there because they're already doing it. And they're not going to take the time out of the day to go <coughs> across town. But this is something for the businesses who don't have an avenue that, that generate a small volume that might not have a space for the container. And that's the way. I don't, I don't want to take away from what other companies are already doing. Uh, I don't want to offer free recycling for the whole. But what I want to do is I want to tell them that this is available and it's a, it's a very clean looking container and for the people that want to do the right thing, they have an option now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, like I said, if it doesn't work and we yep. show up there and there's the concrete in there and TVs and everything that's wrong, we, we can't sustain, we can't continue it. Right. So we're willing to give it a shot yeah. and work with it. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> this winter. <laughs> Ron has done a good job. Yeah, so, as far as okay. the, the memo goes, yeah, I mean, we can, if there are certain concerns that the board wants to list, or I, I certainly can just send them the meeting right. minutes from the previous meeting, and these meetings will these minutes will be in draft form, but we can certainly send them that. I do have a question about um, the the pickup and 
do you anticipate how often or what time at this point? I expect it to probably put on for a week and pick up start. And if needed, maybe three, four times a week at the site. Okay. So I don't see it being a, a problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
no requirement to regulate outside the district. So unlike um, um, unlike a, a regular district where you say these are permitted uses and, and, and what have you, the kinds of uses that are permitted or prohibited in the overlay district are not generally standalone uses. Um, so uh, it makes perfect sense that if you have a lot that's partially and partially out, these two will be satisfied as long as, as you prohibit these related things in the part that's in and, and what goes on outside the district is, is fine. Right? In fact, the, the um, public water supply goes fine. It's not, it's not the same thing as, you know, a house that's partially in one district and partially in another district, so you have to figure out what size house and what setback is. Well, sort of I, th I think the challenge is we apply the infiltration requirement, the recharge requirement. Yeah. Hmm. So if you have a corner of your lot that's in the aquifer protection district yes. and you're proposing an addition that therefore exceeds the 15% or 2,500 square feet, mm -hmm. you have to provide the infiltration. Well, you Doesn't that hasn't that cha isn't that changing in this? Not the way I read it now. I think I think if, if there, there's no lots in two two districts, if you're, if you're in it, then you're. In it. So just so I'm clear on 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 the More idea of it. it. Just so I'm clear on the idea of it. You're suggesting that uh, since since um, there's a certain amount of impervious cover, is that what we're talking about? Right. Yeah. Okay. So we might need to make, we may need to clarify that, that, that um, it's rather than 15% or 2,500 square feet of any lot or parcel, it's the portion of the lot of the parcel that's in the district. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think that would address the, the majority concern in terms of the uh, lots in two district. Uh, because, I mean, the, the way. Point is, the point is, you're not supposed to be. This isn't supposed to apply outside of the, of, of the right. district at all. So. And, but that's, I mean, if, as long as we restrict it to the actual bounds of the overlay district. That should um, address the property owner concerns of you know I've got a hundred square feet that's in the di district and, and that constrains what you can do on the entire rest of his, his property. Because I think the way it's written, it does apply you know, to the entire building or structure yeah. which yeah. fall fully or partially within such district. Okay, I have a couple questions. I guess then. So it's this section right. the whole piece here of the question the the boundary dispute issue which did not matter which is now completely so I mean typically if you're if you're if there is an issue about whether So if, if so if 
conditions, Weston and Samson did their analysis whenever it was, 10 years ago or so. Conditions change. Eh, some Someone did something upstream, changed the whole drainage pattern, blah, blah, blah. It, it could happen. Yeah. It, yes. um, if we stop drawing water, we probably that, raise the water. But that's, yeah. but that's really to the, mind. That's what that was in place for. So that <clears> someone <throat> could come in and say, no, my engineer is better than your engineer, and this is what I where I think the boundary line is. Okay. And um, they, but, they may be right. It's actually a little, that, that situation would be more complicated. Zone 2 is a regulatory dis uh, area established by D for DEP. I mean, we, we submitted yeah, that engineering yeah. study to DEP. DEP blessed it. Made okay. it a condition of town permitting. So be aware that, that even though you don't use your wells for water supply, are still permitted. The permit mm -hmm. includes all the conditions that, it, that, that would protect it for a water supply, but it doesn't allow you actually withdraw any water from it. Okay. <laughs> so it is, I'm sorry. The, uh, um, so, so before you could make a change in the district, you'd have to get it approved by the EP. Uh, but if the, if the yeah. question is, is where does this line, because the line is, you know, generated by a computer uh, I, I think that the issue is that we're missing um, a clarification sentence. Because if you, it says, um, expansion of buildings which fall wholly or partially within such district, that doesn't mean that construction on the property outside the district is affected in any way. Yeah. Oh yeah, I agree. We moved on to a different issue. I'm actually trying to back up into it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just finish my thought. It's losing control. Who decides that we have to do this study? How often does the study get done? That is done in Okay, but let's say some little watershed. Okay, so we stop drawing water from the river. We stop drawing water yeah. from the river, so now other in um, other communities that were potentially thinking about not drawing from the river mm -hmm. reneged on that and continue to draw. So if there is impact to the river and they want to show that they can draw an extra two million gallons a day, mm -hmm. they're going to have an engineer do a study. It's going to establish some district which may come back to our district and change the boundary. So that's what I'm trying to understand. What, how often mm, does that okay. boundary change, and what is the remedy to the property owner if that boundary changes? If all of a sudden that line moves 100 feet, where before it was a little corner, you know, and we're saying you're outside, you can build. Next year it changes and takes away half of the backyard, and they cannot build. What's the remedy? Okay, that? so here's here. Let me try to go through the process. Every public water supply well has a zone two. Essentially, it, in concept, it's it's the area from which water recharges the well. Okay. In hydrogeologists have all these elaborate studies that they do, and they produce a lot uh, uh, and, and area. Um, as part of the Water Management Act permit, you are required to develop a zone two for every well, submit it to DEP for approval. Okay. Um, and then, for all of the wells that are in your own town, you must adopt an aquifer overlay district that corresponds to the zone two. Okay. Great. So, if enough, so at the moment, Reading is not withdrawing from any of its wells, but they're all still permitted and they're all still subject to the re requirements. Unlikely that any time in the near future you're going to be developing any new wells in there. Seems unlikely. But you're right, another town, 
um, um, could decide to withdraw more or develop a new well. And the zone twos don't necessarily um, wouldn't uh, necessarily town change boundaries. Okay, so they could submit something that says, "Here's the zone two for our new well," and it, and it extends into red. Now, the good news is you are not required to change your zoning to accommodate a zone two for somebody else's for another town as well. That's um, you might do, choose to do so by. Mm -hmm. uh, by being a good neighbor, or you know, because you want sending, to them, sending them a bill, <laughs> but you're not required to do it. Okay. Now, if for some reason you decided, or that you wanted to revisit where is the zone two boundaries in um, in Reading, because you think circumstances have changed, but the, the water table is coming up, and that. You are free at any time to submit a new zone two study. It's not cheap, but it can be done. Submit it. Get the EP to change the zone two. That doesn't change the zoning yet. Then you have to come back and go to town meeting and amend the zoning. <coughs> the overlay district you mean, to yeah. reflect, you know, with a new map. So, so. When you talk about boundary disputes, you're not really talking about it, is it here or is it 100 yards from here. You're talking about the fact that the study is done at a scale, and you know when you put the line down on the ground, the, the scale isn't good enough to, to ascertain whether the line is here or you know seven feet over, which may make a big difference depending on what you're. What you're using. Well, I thought the boundary was set on the contour. I thought there was something to look at contours and decide where how. It is, but but it's a, it it's you know on a, on a scale of the map when you when you try to translate that to on the ground what is it you don't have enough precision to be able to tell whether the line is here or the line is here one meter one meter okay so if I were like this property right here where it's if just if you this turn on the if you turn on the contours and the contours and that gives you a little, a little more accuracy. So that one property you're pointing out, this change also changes that dramatically. Because look at, can you, so that one property, um, yes, um, 4410. So I'm going to guess that their driveway, the impervious area of their driveway is greater than 15% of that small area. But when taken outside, when looked at the entire parcel, um, it's it it it's tiny. Right. It's so. Um, and so the other question. I, I guess from the I guess from the from the bigger picture. Look, moving forward, we really would want that person to, if they were to redevelop, redevelop, switch their driveway onto the the um, the other side. Yeah, the other side. But in the meantime, there's probably with this change, there's probably tons of hundreds of those, or tens, <laughs> that's, that's nearing a hundred, nearing a hundred of those sorts of situations. I get over So with this situation. Mm -hmm. Where they're no longer in. The way we've been interpreting is that if, if they wanted to add an addition on the back, they would require, they would be subject to the 15%, 2,500 square feet threshold. Regardless, even if it's in the back outside of the, uh, outside of the district. So my next question would be: Let's say, let's say that we um, change the zoning so that they're really they're allowed to build on the part that's outside the district. Is there a control that says if you're you're changing the grade now to pitch everything back to this little piece of of the district? Is there something that controls it? Because now you are impacting it. If they raise the whole grade of everything to the north. Yeah, and so everything flows down to that one corner, then you're entirely within that. See, now you're flowing everything to the part of the district that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to understand. Is there a contour control? Is there something that controls how, is it DEP? I don't know. Is there something that controls how, how you develop, how it really impacts the piece of the district we're saying you're not required to do something? Mm -hmm. 
So that one, that one particular has nothing to do with the contours and probably has more to do with soil type. It's the only reason why that line would be like that, would be soil type. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's a bad example. Not the only Okay, so we have control because we would we are not we're not required to protect somebody else's zone two. So it wouldn't be uh, it would be some outside attack that would change this boundary. It would come from from us internally. Right. And we'd have to go through the whole process. And we're not required to do it. We're not required to refresh it? Potable supply. So, in this particular case, I'm stuck on this. Um, okay. This the, the nonconformance. In this particular case, let's say this gentleman. Um, this landowner wants to add on to the to add on to their house, okay? Um, and we we conclude that their driveway, their impervious surface of their drive, their existing driveway is more than the 15 percent. Let's pretend that it's that it's a commercial business, okay? <laughs> Suspend belief for a little commercial business. You know, there's an existing condition. They have their driveway. They want to. Um, Expand not within the it would not in the aquifer protection, but outside of the aquifer protection. Mm -hmm. Do then uh, can they would they be able to do that? No, as they're not I impacting the 
parts the part of the property that's in the aquifer protection. They're leaving their driveway alone. We want to build outside the aquifer protection. Does anything that w that we do to allow that expansion, we they need a site plan review. Mm -hmm. As long as they don't touch that portion of the um, property, or they would they? Whatever the normal permitting right. process right. would be, would not. I I would not interpret <coughs> that to mean that because that little piece in there is a non-conforming driveway, non-conforming uh, non-conforming impervious surface, that um, I would not say. Therefore, it needs you know section six finding to uh, to. Uh, I would say, as long as they stay out of the district, they're free to do what they need to do. And you got one way to come out. Yeah, yeah. So the challenge, though, is that the way this is written, it says uses. Right, we have, to, we, we, have to make, yeah. we have to make the language conform to the concept. Because right now, the way we do yeah. interpret it is, in fact, that way. That if you're partially in the district, you're subject yes. to the regulations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, you know, if that's your preference, if, that, if that's mm -hmm. the way it's been consistently interpreted, you can, you can, we can do that too. I but I don't think that's otherwise. yeah. I don't think that's the preference. Yeah. I think that's universally felt that that isn't appropriate. Yeah. What? I'm sorry. Well, that, what is it? that 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 entire <laughs> that we should not subject okay, if this gentleman wants to build out the back this of his house. This conversation is so outside my wheelhouse. <laughs> no, 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 look, it's, see, only that little corner is in the, in the overlay yeah, district. Yeah. And the way the zoning has been interpreted today is, if any portion of your lot is in it, then then it, the requirements apply to your entire lot. We want to change yep. that, and that's what we're that's what we're gonna. Change. Change okay. That is mm -hmm. not that change is not done yet, but we can't change really that. All I did was just try to make it simple to understand. So that's you, you can, can take that. this back and make no, the necessary can, revisions. Sure. Okay. Okay. Were there any other? I guess what what were the other big changes besides the removal of lots in two districts, boundary disputes? Well, I got rid of some of the. The uh, the the questions I had, if if I can interject here, yeah, um, which is in the the ten point three draft, the marked up thing. Uh, we got the the, I guess it's ten three three use regulations. Mm -hmm. We ended up with the A B C D E F, and so forth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and under E and F, it says, except as provided in section blah, blah, blah. Um, which, and I'm not sure if that's the right phrase. And because if these are the permitted uses, then it should be except as pro excluded or limited or, I mean, you know. Okay. Except as otherwise yeah. limited. Well, perhaps you could even be more direct and just say, except as prohibited in the other section. Because that's really what we mean. Well, it's not prohibited as, except I'm not meeting the purpose. Of well, no, the, those references 6 through 2 are, it, go to the, mm -hmm. to the uses that are prohibited. Right. So, um, you know, so it says maintenance, repair, and enlargement of any existing structure, except as prohibited in section or by section 10.3.2 right. would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can fix that. What else, Dave? Anything? The other one I had a question about was on. Um, uh, paragraph six, which is in some, I guess it's ten three three two. Uh, storage storage of hazardous materials, mm -hmm. and it says 
there's a particular restriction that says above ground level. And I'm wondering how that would impact, you know, your typical heating oil tank in your basement. Because it might well be below ground level, but it's certainly... Um, well, C excludes containers that are within a building. So, um, um, uh, or above ground containers within a building. I mean, I'm not sure. Well, I understand that. I think the one, <clears throat> but I would have thought the one that's in the solid would be all right. Yeah, and the way the way it's worded, it appears to exclude that. It says, yeah. you know, unless the storage is above ground level and on an impervious surface, and either uh, container within a building, etc. That was the only, that was my other. Okay. No, no. Well, I, I'm sure that this is not something. I'm mean, sure this is something that DEP has already thought of and has figured out a way to make it the way they want it. But you can that you can check with DEP and see what they. Mm-hmm. And the other one is the paragraph ten of the same thing. There look, looks like just like a missing word. It says, uh, except for excavations, wetland, restoration work, or something. It's excavations for wetland yeah, restoration? Yeah, I crossed out the word for. Okay. Those are the notes I had. Nick, you have anything else? Karen? Any? No. John? Nope. All right. So we have this. What do we have? When are we supposed to come back to this one? What was that? I'm just looking at when we're supposed to review this again. Well, so, it, yeah, your meeting notes say that we'll get a final draft after this meeting to DEP? Do we want to do that? Yeah, so we can, Ray, Ray, and, uh, Ray can <laughs> make some, some revisions. We can yeah. send it to DEP. Um, Meaning we don't, do we want to see that before it goes to DEP or do we not need to? I don't, I don't think we need to. I don't to, think we need to. Okay, don't need to. We'll, <coughs> yeah, um, we'll yeah, have an opportunity, I'm, that's fine. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's good. And, and then, Jesse, who are you doing with the DEP? I want to say his name is Jeff. Okay. Well, we have so we have a contact. Okay. Yeah. We'll send it to that. Those chips. Two of those guys. <laughs> Don't okay. send it to me. And um, and I'll review it. And they they um, uh, they review a lot of these, so they got their you know little nitpicky things. Mm -hmm. Do we need their feedback before we have a public hearing on it? So we're having our public no. forum next Monday. But that's not a public hearing, no. right? Okay. No, it's just to <coughs> invite the public out, you know, town meeting, boards, committees, commissions, you know, to really get a feel for the language. I'm not sure how many will turn out, but um, right. I think if we can get a draft from, from Ray um, by, I don't know, by the end of the week. 
I mean, we all kind of have an idea. I mean, that would be that would be great. I think our calendar has it. Well, they're, they're, we're trying to get the hearings done uh, before midsummer. <laughs> so, the yeah, we're we're trying to do, not do everything last minute. Six twenty nine. Sorry, right. six twenty nine. That's what we're aiming for. Okay. okay. I rarely run into the to the problem that somebody wants to hold a hearing too early. <coughs> um, Actually, we have it at six eight, right? Sure. Uh, Our town manager is not going to. Okay, good. So we'll stick to the schedule for this one. Yeah. Town manager just wants these in as early as <coughs> possible. So it's a beautiful thing. All right, so that takes care of Act for Protection. Now we can move on to telecommunications bylaw. Mm -hmm. So there was a draft in our. <coughs> That's not really a draft. This is more of a model. Oh, okay. Um, because you haven't made any choices yet. So. Is this, is this the model that Westward uses? That, that is, well, we got it. Okay. But basically we use that. Um, the, um, and so um, the term that most uh, zoning bylaws use to describe cell towers and antennas is personal wireless service. Right. Um, that is the definition. It is a definition that is broad enough to include both towers and antennas. Okay. Right now, it looks um, uh, to me as though uh, the zoning bylaw uh, seems to apply only to antennas and not to towers. Um, towers, after all, um, the most visually difficult aspect of it. So this. This works better. Obviously, we're gonna, at the end of the day, we'll have to change the table of uses. But understand the way this this area of law is governed by the Federal Telecommunications Act. The Federal Telecommunications Act is, is what um, what to call it industry sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> it is okay. municipal friendly. So it is all about what. Uh, Restricting your ability to prevent cell towers from from being um, uh, constructed. 
constructed. Okay. So, um, if you pull up the section that says preferences. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, right there. Okay. So, the, the, um, the basic structure of this bylaw is this. Um, you only get to get a facility if you prove you need it. And when you, and you once you prove that you need it, that's that's only the first step. Then you have to um, prove that it is in um, the area that is um, most preferred by the town, and otherwise is um, um, uh, the least harmful to the town. So the first thing you need to do is you need to decide what your preferences are. And um, so the way we drafted it, as an example, your first preference would be for a site that's located entirely within the business and um, or, I should say, industrial yeah. Okay? So that would be your, your first preference. Your second preference would be um, entirely within an interstate highway right of way, but in a residential district. And then the third preference would be outside of the interstate highway right of way, the residential district. Now the truth is we've never actually seen a bylaw that uses, other than yours, that uses interstate highway right of way as a preference. But right now, your zoning only allows these facilities within the right of way of an interstate highway. Show you that if uh, a um, provider uh, wish to challenge that, to predict it all could be nothing slack. It would be, you know, it would be impossible to uh, uh, defend mm -hmm. that kind of restriction. But some kind of a preference is is fun. You could have more more layers of preference than you, than that. Um, but um, the idea is. You you want um, to push any new facility into your preferred kind of location. Many towns have as their first preference municipally owned property. Um, and the reason that they want to push you there is so the municipality can get revenue. That's not a dangerous reason at all, but we see it all the time. Um, so um, you can you can decide what what your preferences are your heart's content. So that's something that, that you have to tell us. We gave you an example that's based on what you've got. And it's um, maybe not the best uh, expression of what your preferences are. Okay. Um, do you want me to go through this whole thing and then, dis and then discuss, or is that where you'd like to go? Rather than stop and talk about these preferences? What do you guys prefer? Oh. Go ahead, John. Oh. I would suggest let's go through it all first and then figure out which w things we can easily is, provide answers to and then the important thing is you can't prohibit you can't prohibit these anywhere basically so so somehow all whatever number of preferences you have should basically accomplish, accomplish everything you know uh, should encompass the, the entire, entire town yeah. Okay. All right. And so the next thing is you have Wait, hold on. I think, I think Dave's got something. But uh, the other thing is, I mean, from George's comment, we have to remember that this is not just a tower. This is exa this is exactly a personal wireless service facility. I mean, it could be, you know, a six foot stock on top of an existing building. That's right. So it's not. And in fact, you you have um, antennas now on top of uh, your um, smokestack. Yeah, and the water tower and, right. and so forth. So, okay. So, is that for a cell or is that for a wireless communication between tower and water? No, 
All right, so let's go okay, through this so whole the thing. The next thing you have to do is you need to, you need to have um, um, something about uh, uh, of the different kinds of insta installation. So, um, so the way I, the way we did it here, the first preference would be um, when you do a um, a facility that site shares with an existing facility. You've already got a tower and putting putting something, you know, um, uh, or putting one, you know, adjacent to it. Or for example, the water tower. You've already put some up there on the water tower, put one on the other side, or you know, whatever. It's shared. <coughs> that mm -hmm. would be your first preference. The second preference would be um, um, one of these one of these other three co-location that on the, the, the same structure. Um, um, the second is that is putting it on an existing um, electrical utility uh, infrastructure and, um, and um, the Westford put in there so we just kept it for now. Uh, the idea that well it's some kind of some innovative thing that might be our second version. And then um, your least preference is um, something that requires a new tower, you know, on a new site. That, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. note that the last thing also allows you to, to waive that preference completely. Unfortunately, you have to have provision in your bylaw to waive essentially everything. Um, right. Because we can't, you, you can't find yourself, you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you say, well, I'm sorry, we're going to turn you down because you have, you don't meet one of our criteria, whatever it is. Um, and then they go and they, they go right to federal court and say, you are preventing the provision of service. Always have to think about about um, you always have to leave yourself in the bylaw an opportunity to waive the requirement so as because you, well, you want the decision to be made by you you don't want it to be made by the federal court you, you will uh, protect the town better than the federal court will, federal court will just right right not, not go the so so meaning someone comes along and says we want to do this that the other thing and instead of saying well it doesn't meet this rig this rigid preference right we we think that that's better than that even though it doesn't necessarily meet the way that we laid out the preferences well, in this yeah that's that's a way of way but what what the provider typically does is it comes and says your preferences are forcing me to um, or preventing me from Putting it anywhere. Offering service, yeah, offering whatever. Service. Okay. So we're, we're offering service. You're making it too expensive. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, doing all the things. So you, you always have to leave yourself an opportunity to waive. So as, because then you've got a fighting chance of negotiating some kind of a compromise or something. Yeah, I was thinking mm -hmm. of a different example is that we're forcing them to a location where they might need a taller tower that's more obvious, whereas they put it in a second or third or fourth location. They Or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 George, did you have something? Yeah. yeah. Three years ago, I heard from Verizon that they were preventing from putting, from putting a tower in the middle of Stone and Valley area. There is a gap of service and they're trying to get in. And I'm wondering if that is a that story that can be solved. Can be trained federal for any type of elevation at that level? I'm wondering if there is something that. Well, Melrose Stone, I mean, the issue there is the Middlesex Fells, which may have an overriding uh, presence. Uh, 
Because <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have to get this. Nothing? Well, you know. Well, no. Lack of perfection? Is that what the PCD filled transformer is? No, seriously, nothing. No preservation land, no uh, sensitive wildlife areas, nothing trumps this? Probably. Providers don't want to put them in wetlands, not so much because, um, uh, you know, because of the <coughs> I actually think federal law prevents, federal law prevents them from being wildlife. Um, well, probably federal law prevents them from being in wildlife areas as well. You know, they don't have that. I got to imagine they're much like railroads, they're modern day railroads, in where, um, yes, that, that railroads were pretty much given the power to, um, and still have the power to do. To not comply with um, any local, state, or local um, uh, regulations, the only ones they're required to are are federal regulations. Mm -hmm. I got to imagine these. It's pretty much. It's like that. pretty much the we same. Were, last time we were talking about radio interference as a possible impossible regulatory mm. Same idea. Does this apply to shortwave communication power? You mean, um, you mean like uh, ham radio and those things? No. 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 Those are those are remarkably um, uh, well protected uh, by federal regulation. Okay. So then, special permit. Unlike unlike other kinds of special permits, you know, we're in the section that says general special permit requirements right down there at the bottom. So instead of the usual standards, the first thing you um, uh, uh, require, you require um, certain demonstrations. The first one being that um, it's only going to be used to deliver wireless services to subscriber devices. So second is the demonstration need, and that's really the key thing. Because usually these providers come in and they say, oh, we've got a gap in our service. We have this terrible need. So um, um, this lays out a whole series of things that you have to you have to demonstrate. These are all the things that you would take to federal court to prove that you have this need that can't be addressed. And the purpose, the idea of this bylaw is bring all of that fact finding down here to you, as a right. from the granting authority, um, so that you don't have to. You can you can get them to prove to you that they absolutely need this and can't possibly put it anywhere else. But you make the you, you make the determination rather than and have the, all of that information presented at, the, at a federal court. So the need for the service, the need for the location, and the availability of alternatives. All of those things have to be proven to you before you, can, you need to issue a special, uh, a special permit. Uh, the, um, I think we said here in the special permit granting authority because we, unless you decide who gets this permit, we, we, you probably don't want it to be yourself but in case you want to torture somebody else. <laughs> 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 that's your, that's <coughs> your decision. Um, okay, and then we have some standards here for visual guidelines. We, we didn't go so far as to require things that look like trees. But um, basically, there are guidelines here. This is something that they, they will let you regulate to your heart's content because it doesn't interfere with the provision of service. So you can make it screened and camouflaged and landscaped. Um, and um, you can pick the color and you can regulate the signs and lighting. And all of those kinds of things. Now, in terms of heights and setbacks, um, many towns provide one set of height restrictions in residential districts and a different set in other kinds of districts. You can do that the way this is set up. Also, 
say one side of high prescription is, is uh, uh, fits all. Keep in mind, this is one of the things that uh, uh, that you know, may end up having to waive anyway. But we would suggest most most towns um, specify high implementation somewhere between 100 and 150 feet. Um, if you have one set, you have another set. Um, and, and similarly with, with setbacks, you can specify um, many towns have a thousand foot setback. very least you probably want to make sure that your, your setback is at least equal to the height of your tower. So that if your tower falls over, then mm -hmm. only if it stays within the property. Um, uh, hey, yeah. Uh, they don't fall over very well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that wouldn't happen. Yeah. Well, the answer is you've got a waiver process um, built in um, so that you can, so if it has the effect of, of, of eliminating or making it impossible to cite, you waive it. Um, uh, but you also don't have, you can, you can start with any number you want. Uh, it doesn't have to be a thousand feet, it can be five hundred. I would just say, don't make it less than the height of the tower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. um, we left in the next section that has to do with application procedures, and I didn't do much with that. You already have application procedures elsewhere, so yeah. you probably would promote this. I'll, I'll, we'll probably trust use those. I'm, I'm not sure there's anything here that's all that terribly interesting. Uh, interesting. Um, and then the decision has, um, um, you know, kind of findings that would be necessary and these conditions. Um, yeah, I mean this, I read through this uh, carefully, and it looks like a very good model. Uh, but there's more. There's, there's maybe more here than you than you want. It's kind of up to you to decide. But it, and then the very last provision says um, if they are not going to discontinue the use of one of these, you have to remove it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> can can they sell the site to another provider? Can one provider transfer the site to another provider without going through a process? The, well, a zoning process you probably don't need because you just, you know, this property is just being sold to, to somebody else. You probably do need a whole permitting process for the, uh, um, for the FCC. They're not going to license the facility. Somebody else. So underlying, are you talking about the underlying land or the facility itself? Uh, let's say the entire, the tower stays and the, uh, the electrical stays on the spot. Maybe change out the, uh, the cell antenna to make it work for their system. But I'm, what I'm wondering is, uh, company A comes in and demonstrates need. They do a study and they demonstrate need and you know, put the system in. Mm -hmm. They want to sell the facility to company B that has not provided that demonstration. I would do that. Yes, they would. Because the way this is, this is um, uh, defined, both the tower and the facility have to be at zone capacity. Both the tower and the antenna have to be So if, you're, if you are one, you have a different, an entirely different antenna you want to put there, you need to Well, I guess. Well, basically. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure how the much they're changing. I'm just saying it's a different provider who has not demonstrated. And that's part of the special permit. Is that written in here? That um, is, is, is the special so permit. Yeah. <coughs> so there's a new provision of the telecommunications act that if you're if you 
just swapping out the antenna so in, in kind. It won't let you require a special permit for that. Anymore. That's fine. If you're applying it, if you're swapping, you know something that's not in kind, then yes, you would need it to be in kind in your special. I can't imagine the the cell company that's going to have it that's going to be able to demonstrate a need. They have a need in a particular area in Reading. They go through this, and then unless they get bought out in total by another, you know, another. Um, telecommunications company that they're going to sell the location where they have the need to another company. They may provide provide that site for another thing, but I can't imagine them. And remember you know, that one of our preferences that it moves up in the preference list if, if you're proposing to locate on the tower that's already there. How does affect companies like American Power that come in and apply for these towers on spec? Hold on to these leases for 10 years and then you use co location stuff. You got every provider hanging mm -hmm. the pennies off an American power owned site. Mm -hmm. How does it affect it? Well, uh, American Tower can't come in and just propose a tower that, because they won't be able to, you know, without at least one carrier because they won't have be able to um, demonstrate a need for it. You know, no gap in services addressed by this if you don't if you don't have a provider. So what they would typically do is they'll come in with one or more providers already. Um, 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 some towns don't allow um, tower companies to even apply uh, unless they have uh, uh, unless they have so they, so they could, they would come in basically as a contractor to the pro, to the right. service provider. Right. So you know, that's, that's, I don't know how 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 do you feel about tower companies? How is three? It's like an owner an owner and an tenant. Yeah. Exactly what it is. Exactly what it is. Right. <coughs> so every time they want to add someone, they have to come in. Well, I mean they. A lot of times they come in with. Um, you know, three carriers just in their first application, and um, and the carriers. That would be three special permits. Could be one special permit for three different. Three, no. three different studies showing demonstration. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> probably. probably. But then each yeah. subsequent. Which, which do you think would would make your life less miserable? <laughs> well, the it's not it's <laughs> to a certain extent it, it's retaining some amount of control. I think. The uh, preference in for the town mm -hmm. is to uh, make the special permits not transferable, which in this case would involve uh, three separate special permits if okay. you've got three service providers mm -hmm. with independent needs, mm -hmm. on a, you know whether they're co-located or or otherwise, mm -hmm. and I think that that's the the general framework that the town would be more comfortable with. Okay. I mean, retaining that that little bit of, you know, you can't just, uh, you know, sell your Verizon antennas to, uh, you know, Joe Blow Cellular uh, without coming through the town again. All right, so it's it's nine o'clock. We got three more things <coughs> to get through. Um, why don't we do this? Uh, it seems like we got a good model here, but we've got some decisions that we need to make mm -hmm. on preferences and a few other things. Can can maybe Jesse? Can you just put an outline together of what we need to? What are the big items we need to decide on, or at least debate and discuss? And maybe each of us individually um, think through that, and we can use the five four meeting to have that discussion. Yeah, we can do that. Does that work for everybody? Yep. So I think I, I think I identified three things that we need to ultimately decide, and then we can start kind of wordsmithing this and making it fit our needs. But we've got the, the three big items that we've got to decide. I think it's. <coughs> and we can, I mean, if we've got individual things, we can pass them on to 
Yeah. Uh, to Jesse. That would be ideal if we could do some homework on this. Yeah. Yeah. If you, yeah. Uh, if you can set it, if you, if you are looking for meetings these days, is that how I can set it? A 5-4 meeting? Um, I, I think That's okay. we should be all right. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll keep you updated. So we're going to... I'm going to send you something to sort of get your independent feelings on Yeah, the exactly what it is we need to think through, and then, yeah, we can all start putting together what our preferences are. May, send them to you. May, just how you were speaking. May 4th? May 4th is the third day of um, Reading County. Oh, great. Really? Wow. I mean, if, if it goes... If it goes three days. It goes three days, yeah. You think it's going to go three days? So I have to clone myself. Okay, well, we can work around that. We'll We'll find another agenda top. uh, Another agenda. But do you think it's going to go three days? It's budget. We don't have any zoning articles, so (laughs) (laughs) it's a good thing. No zoning articles. That was the rule. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah. So I, I guess just what, whenever our next recurring meeting is. That would be May 4th, and then thereafter would be May 18th. 18th. Is it? And that's, we have review final draft language, but we may need to push at least this one out a little bit. Well, I mean, the good thing about this, I mean, we did do everything so early, so if you'll notice on the calendar on page 4, I mean, we have all those dates, you know, in view. Yeah. If we need, if there is some... some Slipping, yeah, sure. Back, we've but, got some time. Um, okay, good. And what what is this? Is this meant to be included in? The I just, I just, oh. I added that. I wanted to give you guys sort of a oh, I see. A okay. graphic okay, cool. that sort of gave a great some visualization. It's not meant to be part of the bylaw. Excellent. So the big questions here are the siting preferences and then the heights and setbacks. setbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, if anything else in here that um, seems um, overly or under underly, <laughs> that's a word, um, uh, restrictive. Mm-hmm. Right. To flag it, yeah. and that's going to end up being a question back to to you. I'll do with that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. We good? Do we want to take a break? Keep um, going. Five minute break would be good. All right. Five minutes. Thank Stand. you. Ah.
so we uh, we're good to re reconvene. Yep. So we're gonna move into. It, it, well, no, it'll be we'll, we'll move into the PRD discussion, but in the interest of raise time, I know George has been doing some review and has some questions for Ray. So why don't we start with that and then we can move into our general discussion of the PRD and hopefully finalize some language. So one of the new issues, so isolating a topic from the new PRD um, revised language that was distributed by the consultant, PHP, and it has poured in to PRD is that the intensity of the PRD reflects what the intensity of the underlying district is. There's no minimum size or FAR or what have you. So I did a cheat sheet here, which is what we had and what they're proposing. So I'll run three scenarios. Of these are small, small basically projects. They have to be 60,000 square feet minimum, the aggregate parcel, in order to qualify for PRD. And I ran three scenarios of having six small lots in S15, say, for the purposes of discussion, there's uh, the old 10,000 square foot lots. They qualify because they're 60,000 square feet. This is a small PRD. Mm -hmm. uh, based on the old <coughs> FAR of 0 0.40, they would be able to build 60,000 times 0.4, or about 24,000 square feet, which roughly could be you know, 10 to 12 units. That's the that's what we have had before the suggested language was proposed. And so on. In the, in the new column that you see to the right, basically a 60,000 square foot lot in an underlying district of S15 qualifies for four units. I hope I'm reading that correct. That is the density required so you mm -hmm. assemble a parcel of 50,000 square feet mm -hmm. you are allowed one single family residence or one unit every 15,000 so you can only build four well that is that is my interpretation of what they suggested and in order to value and, and the, the other scenarios going the same way so in order to push this a little further if we are doing this to facilitate development of some areas which are site sensitive or the context is sensitive, why would we need town meeting approval for such a big, such a small thing? It's basically looking at it as a, at a m macro scale of doing basically the single family or the units different. Mm -hmm. And that perhaps is a good thing because it allows that PRD tool to actually be useful because Frankly, it has not been used for um, for so much time because it requires time to approve. Yeah. So that was my analysis for the PRD, and you know I don't want to go into the PUDR, which is a bigger animal, but that was the other topic. Maybe we should focus on PRD today. Okay. Especially since it's money time. Yeah. Um, and then we had spent a whole lot of time defending what, what was done uh, to the Attorney General. Um, I had made a note for myself that when we got to the PRD that I was going to recommend that, that we eliminate county and approval, not just the small lot, but the yep. outright eliminated. Um, structurally, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. legislative function and a, and a executive branch function, um, and it just it would be odd at the, at the state level, the political level, and I'm not saying there's not a lot of that. Sure. But, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to put some, to put, if you want to give somebody a permit, give them a permit, you know, 
set out what the standards are and and and, um, and decide what you know, they really need. So hold a hearing and whatever. But the idea that you do it and then submit, you, you, know, you do part of it and then you submit it to town meeting for approval uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. To me. And um, uh, so so I'm with you, George. I, I, I only that maybe you're being too modest. The, uh, I, I just get rid of it completely. I, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I'd rather see, see the standards articulated, how many votes on the standards, they're adopted, and then they're applied, just like any other kind of a permit. I'm very uncomfortable with the idea that, 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 that part of the process is, is to... Uh, <coughs> change the zoning map, if you will. Yeah, to change the zoning map. And you saw how it went. It was not pretty. Um, um, the, um, and town meeting doesn't have any standards to apply. So, so when, when people start attacking people's motivations and, you know, their family situations and, you know, whatever else that goes on, um, um, the <coughs> town meeting can apply, you know, is, is free to vote any way they want. It's not, mm -hmm. it, it's not pretty. And I, I, I think eventually we're going to, if we go down that road too long, eventually we're going to get a case where, where somebody, um, you know, um, challenges the validity of the whole process. Of the whole thing, yeah. Right. Um, there is a flip side, excuse me to, to break your train of thought, but there is a flip side if we do that. We're going to lose the smaller scale PUD, if you will, PUDR mm -hmm. that we've had here. In other words, sizes, lot size of two, three, four acres, which can pack in 10, 12 units. We're going to lose that because the PUDR minimum size is 10 acres. Mm -hmm. It's written for a specific project. So if we decide that this makes sense, we don't want to leave a void in our options for housing developments, that there is, there is no tool for them to, div, div, you know, maybe there's a PUDR minor and a major, like we have in the PUDI, major and minor. Maybe that's what we're lacking. That's why these two things go a little bit hand in hand. The PUDR requires 10 acres, and there are very few properties that qualify for that. Mm -hmm. So, well, <clears throat> okay. Uh, the I'm a little confused. The um, because your little your little chart ignores the exclusionary acreage. Uh, qualification and it ignores the 120 percent bonus for the inclusionary and or affordable compound. That was unintentional because these are minor details that would exist one way or another whether we do one thing or the other. So they, in some cases the difference may be a little bit more visible than others but you know as a tool you wouldn't necessarily make a choice on exceptions or provisions. You can shape those any way you want. We're just well, discussing this <coughs> on, a, on a face value here. Yeah, I mean, except that the, for the, uh, you know, six small lots in S15, you, when you exclude the probable, you know, pick a number, five or 10% um, for, un, you know, unbuildable territory or protected areas, I mean, the 40, uh, percent open space, whatever, and you end up with a maximum of three lots or th three units. So they'll the problem, go get another one. The problem is worse. The problem is worse, worse. yeah. They can get another lot in order to <coughs> qualify for 60,000. So maybe these seven lots, you know, it's the number of lots doesn't really ma matter. It is the delta between the FAR calculation, which is the allowable with the old regs and the new regs. I mean, that is probably not going to change one way or another. Right, that's what the sixty thousand is, as you can see, independent. Independent of how many parcels it requires you to assemble in order to qualify for the minimum. So I I I, I, I agree with what you're saying. All I'm saying mm. is that, in the end, the number of parcels doesn't affect the calculations. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why we've had the FAR before, in order to bring in some density. There was some other language about six units to, six units to the acre, I th but I think that's PUDR, which is, you know, for, for right. much bigger projects. As I said, I'm afraid we're going to lose that thing. I mean, I have looked at a couple of areas just to test it. Uh, the area across the uh, train station on the on the mostly residential mm -hmm. side. You said moving barely. It story. didn't make it. It was forty thousand. It was probably, you know, it's 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 areas which are two or three acres, which are which are feasible, as opposed to ten, which are very difficult. I mean, it will be a repeat project or a redevelopment of something already mm -hmm. existing. And we may be doing the right thing, but again, we'll be losing that two for smaller, two, three, four acre uh, denser developments the way we want. So you have to bring both the town meeting at the same time? I think so, yeah. yeah. That was more than 10 minutes. Five, that's all right, that's all right. No, it's an issue. It's, it's Mm -hmm. um, One project at a time. <laughs> <laughs> this particular area, it, it, um, it seems with, with, with the different PIDs and, and PUDs, um, um, it seems to somebody coming in fresh, such as myself, think, wow, this is incredibly complicated. Um, the, uh, um, I'm sure there's a Sure, Nick, David, can you remember another one? I can't. <coughs> it was Most actually of them happened in the nineties. I mean, the yeah, the, the, 90s? the yeah. significant yeah. ones like Sandboard Place and That's so forth were nice before my time. Right? Uh, yeah. Is that probably the last? Yeah. yeah. The last one, mm -hmm. that Sandboard Place one, before this. Well, just like the rule oh, that so. if you don't wear an article of clothing. You know, in five years, it's time for it to go. It's kind of the same thing. If it's, yeah. if it's not, it's not, it's used, not fitting. Yeah, if it's not yeah. being used. Then you have to ask yourself, what function is it? Is is it serving any function? Oh, we have no. the what uh, the um, and I've forgotten the name of it to be sure. The one right next to the um, six eleven gas station. Leaning Elm. Leaning Elm is probably the most recent one. Uh, and that was just before I got involved uh, with the CPDC. We've had the, the revisions at various places. Mm -hmm. You know, Johnson & Woods has been in here like 30 times as the, as the that's been working along. But that's a, a much bigger that's a PD. project. Right. Right. Um, Johnson Woods is the only PUD car that we have. Mm -hmm. Right. So is there a doomsday scenario? Is there something that this just keeps incrementally growing at the same rate? You know, there's nothing that all of a sudden makes this development explode to something that town meeting really should look like. I think if you, if you were to look at a larger scale that may envelop an A40 or an A80 that the building it's time for them to go you know like but looking far out and the possibility that there may be like a double standard you know having like parcels that a parcel that is feasible by combining different districts but then again we're maintaining the underlying density we may be you know locating Together in an area, but if you move and you look at a you know one block, two, three, four block size, nothing changes in terms of uh, town infrastructure or you know, schools or you know the things that you usually hear. That the density stays the same. So I, I don't see where this comes. 
where this can peak. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the, the street crime the, the, the character of the neighborhood? Now, they start combining sites, but they're beautiful little cul de sac things. Well, so we lose, we lose that street edge. design criteria in here that you know tell you how to do things so there is frontage maybe you have to have a mini a maximum setback from the frontage for some portion you know so th this we can this is easy I think we can figure it out on the go mm -hmm. if we want to keep that I don't think that would be a problem I, l I, I like the the devil's in the details right but I like the the sense that um, I like the approach, and thanks for sort of putting all the dots together. In that, if we go, if we do this and forget about town meeting, I mean, it's really, you know, it's really just looking at keeping the same density and arranging it, um, and not going through this convoluted <coughs> process in in order to keep the <laughs> in order to keep the same density. Um, it seems to me that the rest of it is really more of a, a site plan issue and getting the best uh, site plan for that density that, that works, which is really what we're, what we're trying to do. It's not just density. Yeah, it's if we're going to take a street, if we're going to take these parcels that have particular rhythm to them, it's been there forever, and we'll point that out, combine them, and build Yeah, but the the the, the um, character of neighborhoods is going to change eventually, anyways. Because you know, if you keep same lots, um, you know, people the, you only have one thing to do, which is big build bigger on that same you know um, mm -hmm. that same footprint and start to get sort of oversized <coughs> and awkward, um, which has already happened. Um, so you might maintain that frontage, but it's not the same character of all the little capes where this might it's permit special permit though, right? I mean, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it, it, if someone uh, proposes something that's you know does completely break up some some continuity or. Or something, then you have the ability to say again, no. Okay, so I'm, not, I'm not saying that I wouldn't be for it necessarily. Yeah. I'm just wondering at what point the town meeting really should have a say whether this should happen or not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm getting at? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's too large, you wipe out a whole neighborhood. Well, the, the town streets are town streets, they cannot be taken over. The town streets will belong to the town. The town street may not have anything on it, <laughs> except for the street. Um, well, I'll have to look at the plan and yeah. start finding lots of okay. shorter okay. Basically, okay. it's okay. saying you're destroying the street line. of the wetlands and protected areas and so on and so forth from the aerial calculations. So that the 40% the uh, FAR would be applied to the net acreage, not the lot acreage. And if you look at our map, I mean, we've had <coughs> things that have come up, uh, like there's the paper streets, which are uh, west of... of uh, Woburn Street, west of Washington Street, whatever it is, 
um, up uh, opposite the the Montessori school. Uh, and there's around the you know the Barrows area, and there's a whole lot of uh, what well, was originally wetlands, which might be at some point developable, or portions of it might be developable, if you went ahead and used this in the, the cluster housing, where you says, okay, I've, I've got, you know, seven acres, most of it is the cedar swamp, but I've got some upper, you know, some um, upland where I can actually now I can put in uh, 10 houses or 10 units, you know, uh, smaller unit, uh, closer together because I've got the, the area, the larger area. And it's a, it's a way of allowing uh, some development or some expansion, I should say, in areas that would otherwise, you would never consider carving it up into two, uh, eight or ten single family properties because of the, the various constraints. Now it's, it's my understanding that it was the, it's the reason why it exists in the bylaw. Whether it has ever been effective for that mm -hmm. is another question entirely. Just a I mean, footnote on what you're saying, I don't think it, based on this writing here, this, and I'm trying to see other scenarios, I don't think it will ever go more than three units to the acre. Because that is the underlying density of S15. Well, so even if the <coughs> even if if the uh, you know if you look at the net land, it, the visual effect of you know six or seven or eight units to the acre that we were looking at the smart growth, which is really almost like a you know beach house bungalows tucked in together, this kind of very dense, ec eco friendly single unit. I don't, th I don't think it will ever go to that kind of density where it's too many single family homes together creating a dense cluster it's it's the math is not going to be able to support that unless well but which math here i mean because either you, either you either, got the the 10 to 12 you know in sixty thousand square feet if you go with the far I, well that's what i'm saying but it looks like we're not going with the far we're going with the last column so that it is the underlying density and trying to avoid town meeting yeah. approval that's where we're heading. Uh, at least, excuse me, that is my opinion. <laughs> that is my opinion. <laughs> it makes sense if we go, if we go at the, to where the last column is. It doesn't make any sense to ask for a town meeting approval to approve, to approve an, an underlying density. That is why I wanted you to hear yeah. that. But Nick's point is? I like the tool. I think the tool is useful, but we can't just say it's density. It's not just density. And so is there a threshold? So Are we done with Ray? I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. Good <laughs> time with Ray. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Um, yeah. No. I'll just say one more thing. Yes. Which is, which is town meeting um, expresses, the, the best way for town meeting to express its view of these things is not to review an individual project, but to review the, the process and the, and the standards and the policies that lead to the approval, um, uh, because then you're sure that they're, they're addressing things in a sort of objective way and, 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 uh, and not turning it into a popularity contest. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to get this. Um, the, uh, so my answer to the question would be how meeting expresses its opinion when it, when it adopts the zoning change. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it's it's beginning to sound like the proper, you know, in quotes, proposal is to remove this section entirely <laughs> from the zoning bylaw. Just just delete it because it has not been used, and there's right. little anticipation that it'll ever be used. Well, because and and we've. 
fiddled with it and poked at it, and, and we haven't come up with any combination that makes it worth keeping. So what do we fall back on? It's, it's like, the, it's like, so like the downtown mixed use. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I would, I would disagree with that. I think that that is a useful tool. Um, I, I think it's a useful tool in that, um, in that over the years, people are not necessarily always going to want to develop single family homes on that are, you know, 40 feet away from their, <coughs> their neighbors and their front lawn and their back lawn. I mean, that's really not, a, not necessarily a great way to develop housing. Um, and they're, they're, we should provide an opportunity to, to have a different model if, I'm not saying, may, this allows someone to think about developing something different on land that may have some constraints and, um, and in a way that, that works because without it we're stuck with the square lot and the setbacks and, you know, and yeah, it works well, or it doesn't work. So. But the, the thing is, the question is whether this is the right thing to start with, or if we could take something like the townhome uh, constraints that we developed for uh, Reading Woods and start with that as a model instead of, you know, something that this is thoroughly complicated or overcomplicated. So Jesse. I've been noticing a, a trend in inquiries, at least from developers and property owners um, over the last year or so with people, you know, inquiring about, oh, I have this really long, large lot. What can I do with it? Can I subdivide it? Can I do an ANR? Can I build behind it? And a lot of the cases, they don't have the frontage, so they can't do an ANR. They can't divide it yet it's not wide enough to do a subdivision um, and get the full width of the road and still have mm -hmm. two buildable lots. A lot of these lots on Forest and Van Norden are very long, linear lots. So, um, you know, I was curious as to, you know, this sort of trend, and there are communities in Massachusetts that allow for pork chop lots, that allow for back, uh, what do they call it? Like hmm. Back lot um, or lodging you know, or shared driveway retreat even. lots where they allow a reduced frontage width to allow people to build sort of behind another house. And I find that a lot of people are coming looking to do just that in that particular area of town, especially because that's just how the lots were carved out. I don't know if that's, hmm. you know. That seems to be the case when folks are looking at this. That's sort of what they're looking to maybe use it for, not really this cluster type development that we would like to see it used for. So maybe that's something you know we need to think about looking into. A lot of communities have it by special permit, so there's still some control. Um, there's standards. There's requirements to fire hydrants and setbacks and to ensure that those public safety issues are met, you know, addressing some character, um, neighborhood character issues. Um, You're saying that this can be used to more efficiently develop land overall? Mm -hmm. in, that, in, 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 in those particular situations. I don't know if this board has ever come across this at, in the past. Hmm. But well, it seems to be a growing yeah. inquiry, at least from the office level. I, I, I get, you know, a number of, of inquiries, you know, a month about it. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems that maybe in addition to, to modifying the PRD or eliminating it altogether, looking at maybe this is another alternative form of development that we want to try to encourage in those situations. We're going to allow whether or not we encourage it. Yeah. Allow. Yeah. By controlling. Right. Thoughts on that? Can you send us some examples of 
what yeah. those bylaws look like? Mm -hmm. There's quite a few, actually. I was surprised on how many towns mm. allow it. I grew up in a house with a shared driveway. I mean, with our neighbor. Well, we, mean, have a few. we have a few well, already. It's hard to sell that kind of a house, though. <laughs> buy it, but it's only listed for $1.3 no. million. <laughs> but that's a different issue. <laughs> I mean, do we have to develop every single parcel? Do we have to allow every right. parcel to be developed? I don't know if that's necessary. People bought in these neighborhoods mostly because it looks the way it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Summer Ave. We want Summer Ave to change its character. Someone could buy. Well, actually, the lots being developed for the school could have been could have taken advantage of this now. Because it's a new song. Three lots. Yep. Uh, right. Close. If the person was bold enough to buy the next house, they could have changed that entire strip. So a special so permit would need to set up some purpose for this PRD if we were to keep it, so that the purpose, if it is like a preservation, which we haven't talked yet, I know, or if it is a wetland protection, that mm -hmm. it's basically tipping the scale over to areas that uh, will be overused, overusing, you know, that could be part of a special permit. There is not one size fits all, definitely. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe we can leave it here to think a little bit about this, how it can be used as a tool, because that will probably color the next 10 comments I have on PRD, just PRD on how specific it is and whether it needs to be so specific. Some of the comments mm -hmm. may be useful if we choose it one way versus the other. So, Yeah, um, this conversation didn't exactly go how <laughs> I expected it. <laughs> Um, but no, that's good. I'm <coughs> trying to think through how we can move this forward. If we need to move it forward right now, I mean, it sounds like we've got some, you know, rather competing uh, opinions here. I can give you a very high level look of the PUD, like the four big things that I see in PUD, and we've already discussed. So maybe, maybe that that can help a little bit, and then you can decide what the next step might be so okay and let's just do a quick time check okay. yeah okay. so, so maybe i get 10 minutes maximum yeah okay yeah no that's good that's good so we discussed purpose of the district we discussed definitions we thought that it might be a good it's a manageable topic whether we have to have a few definitions or lump them in with other ones it is a solvable problem uh, one of the emails that I sent to you, Jesse, last week was distributed that I found a lot of similarities in a special process. Mm -hmm. um, so that can be also separated and pushed back to the administrative section, although different from special permits for uses, which have their own, you know, mini process for you know, not conform or for for you to allow other uses. Mm -hmm. Understand? This is like a, a special process for for a development project. So that's on PRP. Um, the next topic is dimensional requirements, which is it's uh, probably light on PRD compared to PUD. So. It could be done a little bit. You know, I, don't, I don't have a lot of comments about that. Uh, permitted uses has been sent to the main table of uses, if you mm -hmm. remember. Yep. The permitted uses that we want to see in each of those overlays is already identified in the table of uses at uh, section four, I believe, right? Yep. And, and then it's development standards for, for PRD. It's at the bottom, I believe. Development standards open space, site circulation, various aspects, design quality. Uh, a lot of these things would be, in my opinion, better served if, if they were condensed or more crystallized and sent to the intent section 
so that it allow, this would allow the flexibility of CPDC or the developer who comes in to uh, better adapt the layout to the particular topography or site. Again, these are small sites, as I said. I don't, I don't, I don't foresee anyone choosing like a $200,000 square feet to build single family homes. And that, that doesn't make sense, you know. The economics don't make sense. It will be for particular situations like the ones you discussed. So a lot of the development standards or environmental or design standards could be more condensed and I think sent to the front end or the purpose, what we're trying to do with this tool. And in that, that would lighten up the PRD language greatly. So I, I have run a, a draft which is about a third of what the PRD is right now. Good. So if you, but that, that again would depend where we want that, this to be taken. The PUD is a different animal. Um, so I decided to group the dimensional requirements in one table. I think it begins to make some sense. Um, the the bylaw follows the same structure. Um, I think that would help or basically organize commonalities between the three PUDs we have. Again, the purpose, definitions, and special permit process is the same. So whatever we discuss for the PRD goes for the PUD as well. But when things begin to change is how each of the PUDs is its own little chapter, in many ways repetitive and in the basics, but slightly different in areas like dimensional requirements or uh, <coughs> minor or major streets that that may be going through the property, you know, private or who owns. It's, it's a level of detail I don't want to tell you now, but what we could do is we can identify the common elements that, is, that are common to all the PUDs, do a table of dimensional requirements, and then see how each of those three, the industrial, the business, and the residential, have, you know, particular, you know, particularities or tweaks of, of the main rules. Um, so that will probably condense it to about 70, 75% and make it more readable. Mm -hmm. I can understand why it has been written this way, where every PUD article was written after the other and it was basically repeated and added to the bylaw. That makes a lot of, you know, it's the additive process. It also makes that article very, you know, read, a little readable because you go through it. I think the devil is in the details in how some of the things that you write in one PUD area may contradict something you write in another PUD area, and these two things may be next to each other in the future. So that could be a problem. We want some consistency over all of our PUDs. You know, they, have, they should be sharing a similar purpose. So that's going through a complex article and basically normalizing the whole, this whole article, 4.10, uh, I think it is, 4.9. Um, in the new bylaw, it's 11. 11. <laughs> the old one, it was 4.10. 4.9 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. and 4.10. Yeah. The... So is this the table? This is what you would expect yeah, the table to this look is, like? Yeah, this is, this is all, yeah, I mean, this is like a big picture again. The, the particularities can be tweaks, but this is it. This is the table. And as you can see, going back to our discussion before, is that a PUDR is 10 acres. It's this area here this cell here. Mm -hmm. So there, you can see me, there are FARs of 0 0.50, 0 0.55. These are densities probably half of uh, of uh, 30 Haven, right? That's about 1, 1.1. 1 .1. So it is not small densities, but are the residential portion is six units per acre, which is a little bit low, but we're, that's, where we're, that's where we are right now. This is the big picture. I think they should both be developed at the same time, and that's something to think about.
PRD and PUD. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and if we need PRD <coughs> to serve many purposes, we need to I think collectively understand what these different purposes are and put them into a you know like a front, like a purpose and need statement, some sort. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. This is good. So that's the existing? That, that, is, that is with the edits that have been, well, yeah, this is the existing. This is the existing. The International Zoning Code defines PUD as having an intensity of use of the underlying district. <laughs> so I was really puzzled to see that. So we are instituting here FARs, which are obviously above where these things land, obviously. Um, something to think about. Okay. That's it. So, no, thank you, George. This is good. So how do we want to take this forward? Um, well, do, do we need to review these as a bundle package, as George is, is recommending? And the reason for that is because there is a lot of overlap and, well, I guess a lot of commonalities. Well, <clears throat> I'm a little bit confused, as usual. The because the the April second draft that we have in front of us for section eleven point two identifies eleven point two as planned residential development. But I guess, okay, so we left out, we skipped over 11.1 .1 entirely. Yeah, we, in your packet I did not include it, George was going to give. Which is the PUD. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think from a process standpoint, I mean, I can see this, this is like a high level discussion we're having right now. There is an intermediate step, which is to show you the mechanics of how the changes happen without actually doing the changes, which is actually going through the language and combing it and, and finalizing it for review. I think that intermediate step, <coughs> I, I don't even know how to do that because we're looking at an existing document broken down in sections and basically morphing into something else or crossing out sections. And if the devil is in the detail, this is going to take some time to see how consolidation happens. I mean, what, uh, what are the working assumptions for this thing to happen? For example, if we go light on design issues for the PRD because we want it to be more friendly for whatever reason, things that are crossed off and are substituted with a sentence about you know site you know the site plan review process or the what we're trying to achieve may be may take some time to review it. May not be like like doing it here on the flight. It will take some time, I think. So, I mean, so our, we've got. This is starting to feel like it's it's too big to take on for November, and that it's something we need to tackle. After we get through the November. I think it's topics. Some, I think it's something that we have as an agenda item to work through. Mm -hmm. And when we get it done, we get it done. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. how these larger pieces were done in the past. It's my understanding is that it, like with the smart growth, so we have to really. Yeah. I'm pretty overwhelmed by all this right now. Um, it's a lot. It's just a lot of material and a lot of stuff that we don't necessarily use <laughs> on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So we've got to kind of refresh our memories and <coughs> so. Do it's, I mean, it seems to make sense 
to review them together. Does anyone disagree with that? PRD, PUD? Well, the um, it makes sense to, to deal with them together, but with the um, evidence that I got it wrong, the, <laughs> the PRD might well be um, without the, the, I mean, not exactly as an overlay district, because an overlay district sort of presupposes the town meeting approval. Mm -hmm. So it would be the, the planned unit development, which probably is the larger scale thing that is the boundary for um, identifying a district on the map. And the PRD would be potentially the uh, lighter weight process that would not require the the uh, town meeting approval. Oh, I, see. Okay. I, I think we can work through the PRD first by itself, mm -hmm. keeping in mind where this line is between the where we want it to be between the PRD and the PU, PUDR or the PUDR light or small or something creating whatever that line is, um, but it certainly is, a, it, I think where we're headed is it's a different process. Um, right. And um, and so I think we could work through that, probably wrap our heads or reds around that, move along, and then do the PUD, the combined, but I agree, I think Nick pointed out, they both need to go together to town meeting at the same time. But that doesn't necessarily yeah, the, mean the zoning that we change, need to confuse, yeah. ourse <laughs> confuse ourselves and work through <coughs> it together. I think we can work through one okay. um, one sort of at a time, understanding there's a, we have to be cognizant of where mm -hmm. that line is. Does that, yeah. does that make sense to you? Uh, I had that thought uh, when we were um, discussing uh, in section four, after the table of uses, there are some particular areas where we talk about how can we turn a single family house to two units or three units? There are some tweaks of the main uses in section four, and that's probably where it could go. And if we look at it in this context, maybe we can begin to get a feel of what that's that uh, what where that cap is. Is it like a is it like you know three times you know three lots or three you know four times the maximum size lot? We, we, We'll have to find something flexible, obviously, but. Well, the, but don't forget that one of the characteristics of the PRD is the resident association, you know, the condo-ish character to protect yeah. the, the common spaces. Yeah, one of my comments is to get rid of it, totally. Totally get rid of it. It's probably going to be single family. This is single family, right? It's not townhomes, it's not. Why would you need anything like this? Well, the. I think you just need some mechanism to make sure that if there are any common uh, spaces in common yeah. ownership, yeah. that they have that. That they have that. They don't. You don't necessarily need to. You could set it up so that you don't need that. But if you establish it and it is accessible, a shared driveway doesn't necessarily right, need right, to have right. a have an right. ownership, like you know. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, and, and that might be some of the, the downfall of, of this is that it starts to get into too complex of uh, ownership structure. Well, I'm just you know I'm wondering if if the it's if it's in um, a backdoor way of of, of avoiding the uh, S15 versus S20 whatever kind of district. I mean, if somebody says, okay, I'm going to grab three lots and I'm going to combine them and I'm going to make end properties and then sell them off individually. You, uh, you, you're still, if you get them, if you get three lots and you combine them and you develop and then you sell off, you're still, you're not. You have three lots. You, you're not, you're not gaining anything. Yeah. You still only have. 
That's right. <coughs> because that's that's combined. That's so right. the, the, the power, but you don't combine all the lots. So now how do you spell them off? Into right. Well, that's... <laughs> The, the design question. standards mm -hmm. apply to the whole development parcel. The, so you could have internal setbacks, or but it is considered one like super parcel, you know, or the, the project. This yeah, is the right. project. And you can develop your three houses, in this case, any way you want. You cannot probably attach them. You need to have 10 feet away from each other. So... George, so then, so then without town meeting setting that over, Usually it's just applied over any of our residence districts. You would just say that the PRD may be applied to any parcels located within the S15, S20, or whatever whatever you want. Adjoining that parcels, whenever. Yeah. yeah. That works? Mm -hmm. Right now, town meeting changes the map, mm -hmm. right? Am I, am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it wouldn't be an overlay though. No, no, right now. Yes. You can hold them to these standards because you are saying this is the boundary of your development and everything within here has to comply with this, these requirements. Yep. If there is no town meeting action, is our site plan review, does it, does it still have the same legal power, I guess, to say that the boundary work that you're proposing? It's a, it's a special, special permit. permit. Special it's a special permit. permit. Special it's not permit. a site within, plan review. It would be allowed within whatever districts this body determines are appropriate. Mm -hmm. S15 and S15 yeah. by yeah, special but permit. It's like criteria. So the, the, but the 186. question comes up, who, owns, who is the holder of the special permit? Who holds the special permit? I mean, they're the, I mean, you... <laughs> And how does how does a resident of this entity transfer his ownership, whatever that may be? So my understanding of like the Harold Ave and Old Mill Village PRD is that they are individual lots with a residence association that bounds them to certain requirements, the conservation open space requirement and maintenance mm -hmm. of the road and all the common areas. Mm -hmm. But it's bound also to the special permit. Their their deed goes back to special permit. Okay. So it's, it's so maybe there <coughs> maybe <laughs> from from that structure there does need to be a a homeowners association, but it's to make sure that you're bound by whatever restrictions right. there are. Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, I, I know I'm not particularly familiar with how this all works. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, yeah, let's, let's stop on this one. I think we're so, this as far as we can. So we would you like me to take a stab at the PRD light as a subsequent, as an article inserted in section four which may be like two, two, three pages maximum. Well, do we want to maybe take a step back? I don't know, like the three of us have a meeting on how we can plot this out, how we can put a path forward on, which could absolutely include that. Sure. Maybe the three of us just have a discussion of, okay, here's the timeline and here are the steps okay. we need to complete to get this ready for what, April? Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be November, right? Right. Does that sound like a, a plan? Yeah. I, think, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I feel like I've been things. looking at these things for two weekends straight on. I'll tell you that. Yeah. And I'm just beginning to understand how inter you know how difficult it is for someone to go read and say, Oh, I'm gonna this this is good. I'll try that. And the consideration I mean there's a lot of considerations here. Right. I mean, do we have town meeting approval? Do we not? Thresholds. All this stuff. Sure. 
Sure. Well, I think that's, if I recall, when the Zach was discussing this, the Zach felt comfortable eliminating, at, at first, eliminating town meeting approval of the PRD. They said, you know, realistically, do we need it? But there was a collective agreement going back to the PUD, that town meeting, for the Johnson Woods projects, for those for those projects yeah, those are calories yeah. those example. are big projects yeah. that they did not want to leave <clears throat> without yeah. some sort of larger town review so yeah. maybe you know let's yeah. let's yeah. I, I'm a little uncomfortable with that uh, to yeah. allow PRDs up to 10 acres there seems to be any in between category that is probably yeah. missing mm -hmm. I think like I think you need, I think you need yeah. a PUDR minor in a PUDR major, like we have the industrial yeah. Yeah. up there, yeah. and that would probably have a better cell mm -hmm. timing. So yeah. these projects mm -hmm. may be like three or four, you know, four is too much probably, three, two, three acres, where there are like my five, six, seven lots, that would not affect the character of the street, you know, infrastructure, this thing. I think it's an easier right. cell. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Do we, we, we can set something up during the day or maybe in the early we'll afternoon, one evening? Yeah. 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 yeah, I think it's, we, we, we talked about a lot of stuff here, and I think if we just organize it and okay. put something, be good. Hmm. You okay with that approach? Nice <laughs> 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 All right, we've, we've got... Uh, the last thing for this agenda topic is the purpose. So I know we kind of talked about this last time, but I just wanted to throw in sort of a cleaner version based on our discussion. And, you know, I did some, some uh, comparisons with our master plan and kind of highlighted sort of where there's overlap. Looks good to me. Um, you know, just to call attention to and... Yeah sort of see where we stand in terms of consistency. Jesse, do you want to take a first? Um, I got, yeah, I got a few minutes, but is so there, is there sure. something, yeah. is there like a word or something missing that kind of connects the top paragraph with the set of bullets below? You mean the colon? <laughs> Meaning... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but not limited by section 2A of 1975, comma, including, I, I don't know. It seems like we're talking about the purposes set forth in section 2A, and then we have this list underneath it. Which is in 2A. This is all in 2A? Right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's why the colon is there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, all we're doing is is rehashing what, what sec, uh, section two A. I see. Chapter okay. A I, well, I, okay. I was reading it as you know, you could, above you could, and beyond, no, or no. you know, you could put it, in, you know, comma as follows. Yeah. If you. No, 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 no. I, that, yeah, that makes sense now. I mean, I think this came out as we're just going to leave it as the first, that that first sentence, and then it begs the question of, well, what does section two A yeah, say? Yeah. No, the, so, okay, I listed out, yeah. which was already in here, and... I guess the only question yeah. is, do we want to... I see that I have these crossed out, uh, the, um, the letters. Yes. Do we want to keep those, or do we want to just have a list? We just had to get rid of them. We the letters? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, bullets. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. <coughs> And just in passing, the on the next page, the natural, historical, and cultural resources. I mean, there's a couple of provides and that should be provide and, but that's. Yeah, I mean, I w I'm going to delete this off of the right. the actual change. I just wanted to throw it in there so you all could see it. Well, it's something that it may well be part of the presentation. Yes. So. We can do that. What what did town meeting get all wrapped up with? With the purpose? <laughs> the fact that we time? took out any of the <laughs> bullet items. Okay. <laughs> I think that they were uh, intimidated by how pro development that sounded. 
Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. This is a. That was yeah. my opinion of what, what they were red. I kept thinking that they weren't going to fly. That's what I heard. Yeah. Start to get worried about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we don't see that as being a concern with these bullets. Well, they're what we have now. <coughs> This, yeah. is, this, this is what we have this, it, this is the reason why we are allowed to have uh, zoning um, uh, zoning bylaw. Okay. Not us. This is the purpose that any town in the Commonwealth is right. allowed to have a zoning bylaw is to meet these specific rules. No more, no less. Yeah. Okay. So if you have an issue with these rules, <laughs> take it up with the, with the uh, legislature. Right. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Good. So right. Can, I mean, we can, can, can consider this uh, pretty much wrapped up. <coughs> yeah. We'll just have it. We'll just have council review it just for the warrant, specific okay. warrant language. Good. Um, so then I guess that brings us to talking about the forum on Monday. So now, since we've kind of had some adjustments in light of tonight's yeah. discussion. Um, We can definitely keep it as high level at this point. I think it might be difficult to get into too much detail with the public. <coughs> with the exception of aquifer and purpose, right? We can get pretty yep. detailed in those. Yeah, we should have a draft from Ray by the end of the week. And aquifers, that's a hot topic. Yeah. I think just giving them a roadmap of what we're doing and when yeah. is, is well, important. And, and the telecommunications bylaw, we can you know give them the the, the model, if you will. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the, the whole this sort of approach that this is you know this is what is required. Yeah. Yeah. Details to follow. The, the, the federal FCC says we can't prohibit these. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of information we can share in, in that forum. The fact that we can't, that signage has been more or less tabled until the Supreme Court rules on that case, that's, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I'm not able to make it. Okay. Jean is able to come. Okay. Um, so as far as how we want to handle, it's over at the senior center. Um, right now, you know, we've sent out letters to town meeting members and all boards, committees, and commissions, I'm inviting them to the meeting. Okay. Um, you know, I haven't gotten any questions or inquiries about it, so I'm not sure how much of a turnout we, we will get when they get done. Which, which I'm not has expecting a lot before. of people to show up. Huh? I'm not expecting a lot of people to show up. I feel like there's been a lot of requests for time lately, um, just across the town in general. Um, it's just my opinion, so I'm, I'm not expecting Well, <clears throat> we had a uh, satisfying turnout for the MAPC thing. The On Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah. That was the, basically a full room. That's good. So in terms of thinking through the forum, um, I can certainly take a crack at drafting a presentation, Jeff, and if you if you wanted to lead the presentation. I'm fine leading it, yeah. Um, and, you know, we, you and I can work on that together. Sure. Um, and then as far as materials to be prepared and given to the public, we can give them the draft of the aquifer protection, the draft of the telecommunications. Yep. By law, but we want to make it clear in the presentation that this is the model that we're using yeah um, and then the purpose statement sure and then in the letter we did mention the PUD and the PRD that we would be discussing that yeah so we at this point we'll just sort of have to set the set the stage for for where we plan on moving forward sure. with that um, so it's set for 730 okay senior center will have the projector available do we want to talk bring these at all is this necessary the um, site plan review stuff? Or? I don't think so, since that was already previously approved. That's okay. more administrative stuff. Gotcha. Yep. 
So um, I can work on that over the next, um, I can try and get that to you maybe tomorrow afternoon, a draft of the presentation. Yeah, that's fine. And um, I'll make sure Jean's clued in since she'll be covering uh, for the night on that. And we'll make sure Mariana is available for minutes or someone is available for minutes. Perfect. Okay. Are you guys all able to make it? I think so. <clears throat> George. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Um, next up is the update on the draft site plan review guidelines. So Nick had provided some comments. Those are on your dust packets. Oh, okay. Eighty. It's really just something that comes up all the time. I'm just recently on the, the uh, simple object that came in for the minor modification to uh, the dumpster rotation. A couple of, I think, a split rail fence and this one. Mm, right. They never identify the changes. Now, I don't know about you guys. me of a comment from the town engineer I think about Johnson Woods saying you guys have changed so much and I need a copy of all new plans that shows all the changes because I don't know what's what anymore yeah. so this is good so the idea is that we have one application which will cover both major and minor So we get all of their information basically on the application. And then the guidelines, regulations, and standards applies to both, you know, site plan and minor site plan. And then we added a checklist for minor site plan with um, John's suggestion for the other category. <coughs> yep. I guess I do have one more comment. You should make the provided and waived title mm -hmm. repeat as the page breaks across the pages. I can do that, yep. Do we need to vote to approve this? No, well, uh, I just wanted to run this last by you um, one last time, and then the hearing will be on the 4th to approve <coughs> this. Oh. Okay. Provided town meeting. Doesn't go a third night. <coughs> so that's all on that. Looks good. Yeah, that's okay. good. So once we approve it, what do you just kind of? Um, it goes to the town clerk, and then we start implementing yep, your paperwork. Right. Yeah, so we make it at available um, online at the counter. Okay, good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, this is good. I like this. Yeah, we're we're trying to put together a um, project scoping guide or project intake form that we can hand to applicants at the counter um, to assist us with 
walking through their project idea or to hand them if we're not available at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of a questionnaire that gets them thinking of all the possible things that they may need to think about as they go through the permitting process from, you know, how, how big is the lot, how big is the building, you know, have you, are you planning on doing interior renovations, is it redevelopment, have you talked to the conservation minister, things like that to really start, you know, at, at what George always uses, at the birth of the project, have they thought about these things. So we've been working with MAPC to develop um, this, this sort of initial guide that will be accompanied with an overall flow chart, kind of a high level mm -hmm. flow chart to then show them sort of how they're going to get from their project development to the end. And we're going to have that available at the counter as well to, you know, sort of, uh, you know, go on the whole streamlined permitting uh, work that we're doing. And we're also updating okay. the business guide to go along with it. So hopefully between those two things, <laughs> it'll be a lot clearer along with this and the checklist. It'll be um, easier. Good. Knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> or it could be more complicated. But <laughs> All right, moving right along to planning updates and other business. To Family Dental, request for determination of administrative approval for minor modification. So, as I'm sure some of you have seen, Family Dental project is done and it looks really good. Yeah. Um, you know, she was very excited to get that done. Um, but when it was done, I had noticed that the awnings were fabric and I remember that they were supposed to be metal um, you know and I, there was some you know a decent amount of discussion on that so um, this board did approve a plan showing metal awnings mm -hmm. and I told them I would bring it to you tonight um, for sort of a request for determination to have it see if, see if you would authorize mm. administrative approval for minor modification I shall move well, wait a second, wait a second. No, I'm just curious. <laughs> Actually, there's a couple of things here. I just noticed, I think it's only two awnings, right? They only cut up two awnings, not three awnings. No, there's... I think there's two. They made these two, one long, and there's a single one. I just noticed it when I drove by. It didn't occur to me that the drawing was going to be Yeah, I think I have a... I noticed that there's one <laughs> continuous awning over the two windows, and then a separate one over the end. Mm -hmm. You're right. I have a... Um, I did notice how different, yeah. how much you, s yeah, you, that, yeah, the different pitch was. And it's supposed to be more significant. Pitch yeah, yeah. So, so here's the big question. We gave them money to do this. We gave them all of the money in that fund. We have not issued a reimbursement. They were grant, they were issued an award. They have not, be because it doesn't comply yet with the CPDC decision. Right. Now, they probably exceeded the amount of yeah. the bond, which I think was 10,000. Yeah. Well, the grant was five grand. I thought we gave them that entire amount. I thought it was five. The, the <coughs> way, like a few years ago, yeah. there was an award for 5,000. And then it took them so long to get started, so they actually withdrew that. That they withdrew the grant, and then they finally got the project going. EDC then received another application for the project. They granted five grand again. What I was going to say was, that hypothetical case, somebody's given X dollars to do work on the facade improvements, and then they sort of shortchange the project that was approved. There should be. And at the same time, the drawing that we have here on paper, the storefront is distinctly different. But they presented yeah, they, they, that when they, they came, came in, okay. the final yeah. plans, remember? There was a modification. Yeah. Okay. The, the thing that I noticed the other day is that the awning is already discolored. <laughs> you don't see it there, but it's um, not the front, but the slope. Really? Yeah. 
it was all, um, it, it looked like it was two or three years old. Hmm. Well, that's their warranty issue. They'll have to look into that. Yeah. Well, I think the building looks great. I mean, it's... Yes. So the, the um, owner of the building, you know, I asked, you know, what was, did you have a reason for the change or, you know, can I, can I bring anything mm. back to the board when I explain this? And she did like the fabric awnings of Good Hearts Children's Shop and the MF Charles building and wanted to sort of keep in line with that. That's why she had made the change to go to fabric. Um, I'm surprised that it's discolored already. But. Any, any concerns with? Again, it's it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to punish them for something when they've done this. Yeah, yeah. You know? right. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. it, it's well, fortunately it takes away the impact of the slightly larger canopy over the entrance when you had the rhythm of the two smaller ones and then the larger one it worked a little better than this mm -hmm. I mean it was significantly different in pitch the um, in the metal one is shown going just above the the white band of stone well the, the real the difference there is that they're able to put the the their signage on the awning instead of on the facade. Yeah, that's a change too. You were supposed to have metal letters, yeah. only dental over the entrance, and not have I the mean, address. And that's that's likely the reason for the you know you, you do it this way. It's a considerably different price point than doing the metal awnings plus the sign. But I I think they lost quite a bit. In terms of architectural detail, by doing it this way, yeah, they did because they covered up the pier, the vertical yeah. piers that happen yeah. um, in the center one. In pulling your eye with, if they had the sign down above instead of six thirty-six, the sign back in there that you would have pulled your eye in there. Yeah, and that's where you're supposed to enter. Yeah, I think, and I, I want to say though that the last, I'm sorry, I didn't attend the last. Elevation, but I thought that the family gentle signage was actually going to go above the awning. Yeah, this well. isn't the most recent one, is it? <coughs> I don't think so. No, because that has the arched windows and the low, mm -hmm. the low sill on the windows. <coughs> Again, uh, what are you going to yeah. do? Yeah, right. Uh, so, so I can do we have a motion or? Write up an administrative move that the CPDC um, authorized administrative approval for the minor modifications to the site plan for the family dental at 632 Main Street. Second. All those in favor? On a related note, I was talking to somebody who's involved in this project. There's a telephone pole behind this building, a utility pole, that nobody claims. Nobody claims to own it. Reading Light doesn't own it. They say they don't own it. Nobody owns it. And the owner of this building would like to get rid of it because it opens up one or two more parking spots. Huh. And is it in, is it, right is it <coughs> in, in, the town pro uh, in the town lot or is it on? I, I think it might be on their property. There's utilities coming into it and she can't seem to find who owns it. Hmm. Nobody wants to claim it. That would be a good exercise for somebody in the town to figure mm. out, because if it could be moved, it could really yeah, free uh, up uh, one parking. One of our engineers has a pretty good relationship with the utility company, so okay, um, he's pretty good about researching this kind of stuff. I can see if he can look into it. Let's just see, because then that would help with developing the upstairs if there's additional parking available. Right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Why don't we just knock out these minutes? So the ones now it keeps growing, so let's knock them out. The ones in your pocket are the most recent. So I think I've looked at them and provided comments. Nick, you've done the same. So we're looking at. 
at January 12th? Yeah, let's start with the 12th. <coughs> Move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of uh, January 12, 2015, as amended. Second. All those in favor? Abstain? I'm going to abstain because I was. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> All right. Um, next one is March 9th, page 97. Mm -hmm. So Nick had some comments in these, and then I, I think I included stuff here. Yeah, so my email, minor stuff. <coughs> I was good changes. Moved that the CPDC approve the uh, draft minutes for the meeting of March 9th, two thousand fifteen, as amended. All those in favor? Second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Clearly, I want to get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, good. And then um, March 23rd, which is on page 105. Also, good comments from Nick. Yes, the Nick's are written in there, and then Jeff had written comments in his email that we can address. <coughs> Move that the CPDC approve the draft minutes for the meeting of March 23rd, 2015, as amended. Second. All those in favor? And I'm going to abstain. Three, zero, two. two. Yeah. All right. Any updates? Anything, um, Jesse? We had an excellent turnout this evening. Development action plan. Sixty people attended. Um, a lot of a lot of good feedback. Um, the next meeting is on June third. Senior Center will be presenting the findings based on the uh, feedback from this meeting. So you all are welcome to attend that as well. Um, I'll post it for CPDC. When, when is that? June 3rd. Oh, okay. Um, that's the thing I have on here. Um, Pizza World is coming on the 4th. Uh, so we'll see him. For that same location? Same location. And um, I believe... Mm -hmm. well, that's not... On Main Street, that's it's a world, yeah. Across from uh, the uh, Bank of <coughs> They form a Getty station next to the Bank of America. Mm, okay, because I thought I, I thought I saw on the application that it was, or on their announcement that it was a uh, different location, but hmm. that's probably my confusion. They, they made a they made a flyer announcement of some kind of pizza world coming with the blah 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 and I thought it was I didn't think it was that Main Street location. Yeah, three oh six Main Street. Huh. Um, that's about it. Um, I did have a question for the group regarding seeing the Easter signage. Um, the permit is not very clear as to what it was supposed to be, or at least the drawings. And I wanted to see what this board had recalled um, for what the illumination was required. Uh, Jean and I are reading the drawings as it's supposed to be halo lit um, letters. <coughs> well, the, the Sam's Bistro was halo lit, and but the, the, the border, I don't remember uh, what the decision called for. Because at some point I think they did change the letters to, to channel lettering, which I don't think they was this board approved. It was not. They um, they did a bunch of changes. Remember at one point they changed them to to lit letters. The uh, they had some kind of an outline, like a rope type yeah, outline, some, yeah. which was not bright enough. 
Then all of a sudden they changed one side to channel lit letters. Right. <laughs> and then they changed them back, I thought, to halo lit. <coughs> yeah, there, there, there have been several changes. The, yeah, the, 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 the stamped drawing from CPDC to me chose halo illuminated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they never got approval for anything else. Correct. So their, their sign maker is looking to refresh in the sign, and I think that means to refresh in the channel lit lettering, which is not approved in the first place. Right. So I will let them know that. Their halo well, lit letters never w worked right. No, they weren't bright enough. They probably didn't put real lights back. Yeah, it looked like, like they put like a something. like a rope, like a mm. rope light. They cheaped out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but it's also I mean it's business A, so we don't have the. Well, in the site you you controlled it through your site plan review. Right. So, um, and the site plan decision does reference the the plan that CPDC stamped. Okay. So, so we could make them come. We back. have some leverage, yeah. okay? Yeah. I wouldn't object to channel lit letters if only the letters were lit on that sign to get rid of that stupid perimeter rope. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a bright enough area, anyways. I don't think that anything they do, if it's, you know, a thin enough letter, right. would really be so bright because the background's not lit. Right. But you have all the leverage. You you know what we approved, so. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I was interpreting it correct because the drawing itself is not really clear. So, all right. Any update on Perfectos or Conradis or? Um, <coughs> no. Well, no. Has the sign or right. Perfectos. We continue <laughs> yep. to monitor the site. You know, there's Perfect usually has an issue here and there with the high winds, but other than that, we haven't heard much from him. Bunratties is getting close. Um, they're working through their, their final final construction details, and uh, we're meeting with them actually tomorrow morning. Let's see what else? It's like a final walkthrough, or mm -hmm. I think just. You know, making sure they understand what's required with the Board of Health, getting all their final walkthrough queued up to what they, what they need to do because it is sort of a kind of a set process where, you know, the fire department will go in and planning will do their walkthrough, you know, one does his walkthrough and it's sort of the last piece is the health department and a lot of, a lot of it's riding on that. So we're meeting with them to sort of make sure everything's all queued up the way it needs to be. Okay. Mm. Saw Subway's getting close. Got their now hiring sign up and yeah. signage is up too. Yeah, they're moving right along. They've been quiet, no problems with that. Good. Um, yeah. So that's moving right along. Haven't heard anything for the Quiznos space lately. There's a couple inquiries a while back, but nothing that came through. Um, the post office, I think it was last week, they were going, bids were due, I think it might have been Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon, <laughs> so a couple of developers were interested in that, and they were <coughs> trying to encourage, you know, the smart growth yeah. for that. Yeah. Pay no attention to the April Fool remarks made by <laughs> a town manager. <laughs> What did he say? At, at the MAPC meeting, he, he said the town has just bought the Reading Post Office and we bought the Eastern Bank building and we bought the <laughs> <laughs> Reading guess, Cooperative and the parking lots behind it. And so of course, on. I was facing this way, but the Reading Chronicle gentleman was in the back. And Bob said the second he said that, the, the reporter just went flying out of the room. <laughs> no way. <laughs> he was, <clears throat> and then he, but then he didn't. I mean, he was so funny about it. He didn't even say April Fool's. He just sat down. <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, he couldn't really keep a straight face, so hopefully everybody figured it out. And there was nothing in the in the patch or the, or the chronicle <laughs> yeah. about it. But um, yes, it was it was pretty entertaining. We had a plan that we we found. Gene dug it out from 1965. Um, a development plan of downtown, and it called to block off Haven Street and make it like a pedestrian mall. Very right. 
very Boston very City Malden Hall Square. Esque. <laughs> City Square esque. Malden yes. Square. And exactly, and make there was a in this whole area, I guess the northern Main Street area, the common was to be blocked off for the like a civic plaza. So we're gonna have a civic plaza, a retail plaza, and then they proposed a bypass road for Route 28. Can't take out probably 100 homes, but um, <laughs> and that's and that's what their plan called for. It, it was pretty amazing. I can email you guys. We scanned it in. I'll email it yeah, to you guys. Yeah. See that. Um, so he opened up with, "This is our plan." As <laughs> April Fool's <laughs> joke, <laughs> and um, it was it was a good way to start start the evening. I think um, you know everybody. I think enjoyed enjoyed the evening. Right. It, was a, it was a really well attended and well received. Um, was it televised? It was not live, but we were. Yeah, but we probably played all the time. So yeah, it should be up on their YouTube channel. Oh yeah, yeah interesting. YouTube. So, and that's that. Good. And we have not bought the post office. <laughs> Somebody will, I'm sure. Yeah. Move right. to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Jesse, do you want, please? You survived. <laughs>